to clean up our 3D scan, we're going to use a free program called MeshLab, which you can find at meshlab.net. Click download, and you can see there are several versions available. When I open MeshLab, this is what it looks like. We're going to click File, Import Mesh, and then look for the 3D scan that we created. And choose Open and OK. You can click and drag to rotate a model. And you can also use a two-finger swipe to zoom in and out. You can see that there's some roughness here that we're going to want to clean up. And also we have a lot of material at the bottom that we want to cut away. You can see that the triangles get much larger at the bottom. I was not concentrating on that area when I was conducting the scan, so the scanner application did not have a lot of detail to work from in those areas. The first thing I'm going to do is check the scaling of the model. So I'm going to click the measuring tool and then I'm going to click the top of the head and go down what I estimate to be about a meter or 1,000 millimeters. And if I look over at the side, you can see that it's saying that it's 0.9 meters. So it's measuring in meters. It does not say a thousand millimeters. So I'm going to need to change that scaling. I'm going to click the measuring tool to turn it off. Then I'm going to click on filters, normals, curvatures, and orientation and then scroll all the way down to Transform, Scale, Normalize. So I want to scale. So instead of one millimeter, I want it to be a thousand millimeters. And I don't need to type in a thousand for the X and Y because I've got uniform scaling selected. If I click Apply and Close, now we'll click on Windows, View from Front. OK, it's viewing from the side. So it thinks that side is the front. But now, if I click on the measuring tool and measure that same distance, it's roughly 1,000 millimeters. So I'm working with the correct units now at this point. So I'll click the measuring tool to turn it off. and. Hit C on the keyboard to clear that. Uh, the next thing I want to do, we noticed that the model wasn't facing front. So I'm going to rotate it. And to do that, I'm going to select the Manipulators tool. So I'm going to click that. Oops, I need to click the Measuring tool to turn it off. Then I can click the Manipulators tool. And the directions say press T to translate, R to rotate, S to scale. So I'm going to tap on the screen, or click on the screen, then tap the R key. And I don't want to rotate it around that direction, so I'll choose. It says to select X, Y, or Z. So if I select X, that's the axis I want to rotate around. So I'm going to, whoops, nope, it wants to go that way. Um, so what about Y? Nope. Well, wait a minute. Yes, that's the one. So I'm rotating, it says I'm rotating around the Y axis, but I'm rotating actually around the Z axis, the up and down axis. Um, so sometimes these programs will change the Y and Z axes. But for now, that looks good. I'm going to 
press return to apply this change. And then I'm going to click the manipulators tool to deselect it. So now if I go to Windows, view from front, it's actually viewing it from the front. But if I click Windows, view from front, Z is up. Now that doesn't look right. All right, so we can rotate it again. I'll choose the manipulator tool, click on the screen, tap the R key on the keyboard, and then rotate it in that direction. Hit return to save and then deselect the manipulators tool and choose Windows view from Z is up. Well, almost. <laughs> One more time. R. Return. Click the tool. Windows view from Z is up. There we go. Okay, so that's pretty good. All right, so now I'm going to choose view. Z is up. I want to look at the right side because I want to cut away this material here. So to do that, I'm going to choose this tool called Select Vertices. It's an arrow with three red dots. So if I click to select that, I'm going to click and drag the selection area. So all of the material highlighted in red will be it cut. That's what's been selected. So then if I go up again to the tools and hover over the, the triangle with the X through it, sort of the hollow triangle, it says delete selected vertices. So I'm going to click that and that has been cut away. Again, I'll choose Windows view from, I'll stick with right, Z is up, okay. So it centers whatever part of the model is left. One thing to note, the, the cut on the bottom is not a clean flat cut. And if you look at the, the bottom edge here, you can see that that's jagged. So that's not um, a clean flat surface at the bottom. So we'll have to deal with that later. Um, but we've reoriented the model. We've cut away excess material. We've scaled it to up to life size. And the only thing that remains is we want to clean up the roughness here to smooth some of that out. So to do that, I'm going to choose filters, smoothing, fairing, and deformation, and then choose Laplacian smooth. And this is a simple process. Uh, you select a number, one, two, three. Um, to achieve different smoothing results. And you can preview it before you keep it for good. So I'm going to zoom in a little more and I'll click preview. Okay, you can see that really smoothed out a lot of that excess. Maybe a little too much. Um, obviously when you smooth, you'll lose some detail. So I'm going to uncheck preview and I'm going to go all the way down to one and click preview and see what that looks like. That's better. Notice there's more detail retained around the mustache and the eyes. Um, there's still a little roughness on the face, but depending on the setting on your printer, it probably won't even reflect that at all. It won't capture that detail. Um, you can click preview, 
or uncheck preview and type in two and click that to see if you like that better. Um, it's a little cleaner on the face and neck area, a um, little more detail lost on the eyes and around the bearded mustache. Um, but you can choose whatever smoothing you like. And don't select apply because it's already been applied. If you click apply, it's going to apply the smoothing again and make it too smooth. Um, and I guess I should mention here that uh, there's no undo feature in MeshLab. So if you make a mistake, you need to go back and start again. Um, if that bothers you, then you can save as you apply different steps so that you don't have to redo everything. And start from the beginning, but there is no undo. So if I, you accidentally click apply here, it'll get too smooth and you'll have to start over. Um, but instead of clicking apply, I'm going to click close. And that's all right. Um, a couple things to notice. First of all, down at the bottom where it says faces, 57,454. So that's the number of triangles. If you're working with Tinkercad, uh, there's a limit, a triangle limit of 300,000 triangles. So this is well within that limit. It's still a lot of triangles though. So if you load this model into Tinkercad and make changes to it, you know, there'll be a delay as the software processes the changes. Um, we could simplify it more or just be patient. Um, but this will be able to be loaded into Tinkercad. The other limit in Tinkercad is the file size, and that file size limit is 25 megabytes. Um, our original file that we started working from was five megabytes, so that's well within the 25 megabyte limit for Tinkercad. And we've cut a lot of that material away, so this file will be even smaller um, when we save it out. Uh, another interesting tool to take a look at is up at the toolbar here, wireframe. If you click that, you can see all the triangles from the scan. So there's a lot of, you can see there's more detail around the eyes than the cheek is, is less detailed. Um, but it gives you a sense of the complexity of the mesh. All right, so I'm going to save this out now. Choose File, Export Mesh As. Give the file a name. And then make sure to select STL file type from this drop down menu. And I click Save and click OK. And when I go to my downloads, you can see the cleaned up file. You can see the face there compared to the original was a lot more grainy and rough. Okay. Now, there's still one last step because you'll notice as I rotate this model, it's just, there's nothing at the bottom. It's just a mesh. It's not a solid. But we will fix that during the slicing process. I'm going to use Prusa Slicer, which is a free slicing program that you can download from prusa3d.com. Just click on software and you can download whichever version of the slicing program works with your computing platform. In Prusa Slicer, I'm going to import an STL. This is the file that we cleaned up. And of course, it's too large, it's life size. So if 
course, I'm going to rotate it so that it's facing forward and that the bottom is on the surface. Click the model. I'll resize it. Let's say 60 millimeters tall. Just want a small test model for now. Um, and if I look at it from the side, you can see it's still not as flat as it could be. So I'm just going to tweak that a little bit. We still have the problem that it's just a shell. So to fix that, I'm going to click on the model and choose cut. And then drag the cutting plane down so that I'm getting, cleaning up all that rough stuff at the bottom there, but also when I make this cut, it should produce a nice flat surface. Uh, I do not want to keep the lower part, just the upper part. So I'll un uncheck that box and click perform cut. Now if I look at the bottom, I've got a nice solid bottom there. So that looks good. I would like to produce a quick prototype model. So I'm going to select the Prusa Mini with a 0.8 nozzle, and I'm going to choose draft quality. So that's 0.5 millimeter layer height. So it's going to be fairly rough, but it will print quickly. All right, that looks good. Now, if I click slice, you can see that that's 41 minutes, which is fine. But there's a few more things that I can change to speed it up. I don't need any infill, for instance, so I'll just change that to zero. And if I go to settings and look at layers, bottom layers, I don't need any bottom layers either. It will be fine if it's just a hollow shell all the way up. So I'll go back to Plater and I'll click pre Preview again. So now I'm down to 28 minutes. Um, and if I look at it layer by layer, you can see, rotate it so you can see it better. You can see that what I'm doing is I'm just creating a hollow shell. It's not a functional piece, so it doesn't need to have you know, any particular strength. And even though the chin is slightly overhanging, it's not really, um, there's nothing printing in space. And also the shells will be printing from the inside out. So each layer that goes up will be resting uh, initially on the, the outer shell of the layer below it. Right, so I shouldn't need any supports there. The nose, the same thing, back of the head. Um, well, that should all be fine. Although it looks like the ear might be messed up a little bit. And that's a, undoubtedly a factor of using such a rough layer height. Obviously, if I chose a, a smaller layer height, then that detail would undoubtedly be captured. But let's see what we get. Export the G-code and we'll print it and see what we end up with. So here's the printed model. Looks pretty good. You can see under the chin is fine, under the nose, all the overhanging sections. That one ear is a little funky, so if we wanted to get a cleaner print, we would use a smaller layer height. Um, the other ear is fine, the hair, 
is good. And you can see that it's hollow inside. Right? We've got our shells, uh, but there's no bottom layer and no infill. It's just hollow. Um, but that's more than sufficient for the integrity of a print like this. It's very quite strong, actually, um, just the way it is.